everyone. Welcome back to One Cent Sports Cards YouTube channel. I am back today with another set guide and review, and this time it is for 2022 Tops Opening Day. Now, this is a fun, lighter side of baseball set, but is it a budget collector's dream? Or is it not really all that it seems? Well, there's one way to find out, and that is with the One Cent Sports Cards 2022 Tops Opening Day Set Guide and Review. So even though we're in a lockout, 2022 Tops Opening Day is being released tomorrow. It's like an annual spring rite of passage, and it has been for years. And what we're trying to do today is find out how good 2022 Tops Opening Day really is. And we're going to do that by using the exclusive one cent sensational set rating. Now, what is that, you ask? Well, it is the most in-depth rating system you're going to find anywhere on the good old interwebs. What I do is I break the set down into 10 different categories, and each of those categories is worth 1 to 10 points. So that's everything from card value to the autos. If it's a category, it's in there. We have 10 total categories. Then what I do is I add up all of those points, and that's what gives us our final sensational set rating score using the scale that you see below. Then what I do is I compare this year's set with the sets from the last two years, which we have also reviewed to see if the set is getting better, if it's getting worse. And we compare the set to all of the other sets that have been released so far this year to find out how good it's stacking up against this year's competition. So one more thing before we begin. If you like these set guides and reviews, be sure to throw a thumbs up. That is the best way that you can support the channel. And if you want to see all of the set guides and reviews that we'll do throughout the season, be sure to subscribe. And if you want to be the first to see them, you got to hit that bell notification. And if you like what we're doing on the channel, be sure to check out my Patreon page. There you can get all sorts of access to breaks. You can get all sorts of access to my Discord channel. And it is a great resource if you are into the hobby. So there is a link in the description below to my Patreon page. So let's get into it. 2022 tops opening day. Here's what we're going to cover off on. First, we're going to do the set highlights, kind of tell you at a broad level what the set's all about, tell you the different buying formats you can get it in, and then we'll also cover off on all the key rookies and the key cards that we can find in opening day. Then we'll tell you all about the different parallels, inserts, relics, and autos we're going to find in opening day. And I'm even going to show you some teams that you can target in breaks. Not a big break product here, but nonetheless, I'm going to tell you a few teams anyways. And I'm even going to give you a break cheat sheet, which is new for 2022. That'll tell you how good all 30 teams are and which ones you should be looking to get into breaks. And that is what brings us to the one cent sensational set rating, where we will find out how good 2022 tops opening day really is. And we'll finish with the 2022 set rankings to date. So let's dive right in. First for our set highlights, the first thing you need to know about tops opening day is it is a very budget friendly, lighter side of baseball set. This year's set has 220 cards in the base set checklist, and opening day is in its 24th year of production, started way back in 1998. There is a small three-color parallel rainbow, but you can expect that there may be some retail exclusive colors also mixed in with that rainbow. It is available in retail and hobby formats, and really, it's an insert-driven set. There's seven different inserts for 2022, and they're going to land one per pack. The design does use the Topps flagship design for this year. So if you're opening up Series 1, looks very much like that. Just adds an opening day logo onto the card. And it is one of the hobby's most inexpensive sets released every year. It is targeted at budget collectors. It is targeted at younger collectors. You can get autographs, but none of them are going to be guaranteed in any of the formats. 
Also, like we said, it's the lighter side of baseball. The MLB mascots are featured heavily throughout this set in inserts and in relics. They're all over the place, fairly easy to find. And there are also 25 image variation cards that you're going to find in the base set checklist for 2022. New for 2022, we have something that has never been done or hasn't been done in a while in opening day, which is a dual auto relic book available. So kind of a higher end hit that they have included in opening day for 2022. For our buying formats, first let's start off with hobby. You can get a hobby case that's going to have 20 boxes, 36 packs per box, seven cards in each pack. So that's a total of 5,040 cards. And the current online price on those is $1,250. So your cost per card sitting at a small 25 cents, which are guaranteed to get 720 different inserts. You can also get a hobby box, very inexpensive at 65 bucks. That's the current online price. You're gonna get 36 packs in that box, seven cards per pack, so 252 total cards. That'll give you a cost per card of 26 cents, and they're guaranteeing that you will get 36 inserts. You can also find this in retail all over the place. We're going to start with the blaster box. There's going to be 11 packs in that box, seven cards per pack. So 77 total cards cost you 20 bucks. So your cost per card also sitting at 26 cents and you're guaranteed to get 11 inserts. For the hanger box, you're going to get five packs in the hanger box and there's seven cards per pack. So 35 total cards. That'll cost you 10 bucks. Your cost per card goes up a little bit to 29 cents and you're guaranteed to get five inserts there as well. The other thing to note, there will be individual gravity feed packs available all throughout your big box stores. And like I said, you probably will see that there will be some retail specific parallels available in both of these formats. So what are the key cards in 2022 opening day? Well, let's start with the rookies. Going to be very similar to what we saw in top series one. Uh, we've got Vidal Bruhan. Matt Veerling, Gavin Sheets, Riley Adams, Brandon Marsh, Trey Ambergy, Jake Berger, Jaron Duran, Lars Newbard, the best name in 2022 baseball cards, and we have Ernie Clement, Wander Franco as well. For our parallels, autos, inserts, relics, all sorts of that, here's kind of what we're going to be chasing in opening day. First, those image variation cards and the autoed version. So you can see what the Fernando Tatis looks like there over on the left. Those will be sought after in this set. And of course, the base parallels. Now, those will be sought after because there's just not that many of them. And we also have a new insert set for this year. It's the Bomb Squad inserts. And another new one, we've got the Luck of the Irish inserts. And you can get autographed versions of those as well. We've got the triple play inserts. That's going to feature three players from a team on one card. And we have the Turf War dual diamond relics. A very cool front and back relic that we'll show you here in a little bit. The mascot relics and auto relics. Those are always fun cards to hit in opening day. And the dual autograph diamond relic book, which is new for 2022. We also have the opening day autos. Again, not an auto driven set, but we can find them in those opening day autos are kind of your base auto set in opening day. And then finally, we also have autoed relics. It's the autograph diamond relics. So for the parallels, like I mentioned, not a ton of them. We've got the opening day parallel. Those will be limited to 2022. They might be numbered, but it, historically they're not. But they're, they will be limited to 2022 cards. And then you go all the way down to the one of one, the opening day one of one edition. Nothing in between. There are printing plates, four versions. Obviously, those are going to be one of ones. And although it's unconfirmed in the past, our retail parallels, you'll get a red foil out of Target, a purple foil from Meyer, and then a blue foil for Walmart. But like I said, not a lot going on on the parallels, not really a parallel driven set. Keep in mind, it is a budget friendly set. For our inserts. We've got the new one for 2022. That's the Bomb Squad insert. There's 25 cards in that subset. 
We've got Dugout Peaks returning for 2022, 25 cards in that set, and the Luck of the Irish. You can see what that looks like over on the right with the Bryce Harper card, 20 cards in that subset. The Mascots return again, 24 Mascots featured for 2022. And the opening day, that's going to be the opening day uh, celebrations that different ballparks have. That's going to have 15 cards in that subset. The triple play inserts, 30 cards, one from each team, featuring three players from the team. And the walk this way, that's going to be the walk-off hits that happened in 2021. 25 cards in that subset. For our relics. We have the Diamond Relics, 26 cards in that subset. The Major League Mementos Returns, that's got 10 cards in that subset. The Mascot Patches, and those are actually going to be manufactured relics. And then you've got the actual Mascot Relics, and that's going to be 10 cards in that subset. We have the Opening Day Relics, that's going to be 25 cards in that subset. And the Turf War Dual Diamond Relics, you can see what that looks like over on the right. The front of the card, Xander Bogarts. On the back, you've got Aaron Judge. And it's got dirt from both of the ballparks that they play in. So a very cool relic right there. For our autographs, we've got the Autograph Diamond Relics. Six cards in that subset. Ballpark Profile Autographs, that features not players, but people that are personalities at different ballparks. Five cards in that subset. The Dual Autograph Diamond Relic Book Cards, see what that looks like over on the right. Very cool right there. You've got the Dual Relic and you've got the autographs from, uh, in this case, Steven Strasburg and Juan Soto. The image variation autographs, there's going to be 15 cards in that subset, and they're each numbered to 10. So some very sought-after cards right there for a budget-friendly set. The Luck of the Irish, that comes in an autograph version, 10 cards in that subset. And the Mascot Autographed Relics, very fun ones to pull there, 3 cards in that subset. And you can get just the Mascot Autographs without the Relics, 7 cards in that set. Finally, we have the opening day autographs, and there's going to be 29 cards in that set as well. So, with all that being said, if we're buying into breaks, which to be fair, you're probably buying just a personal box if you're buying this, but there will be some breaks, probably some case breaks of this, very inexpensive, and if you're buying into those, here's some of the teams that I'm going to recommend for you. First of all, the best team? It's going to be the Los Angeles Angels. A little bit of a surprise here, but I think you'll see why. The Angels have six base cards, one rookie card, six different autos you can pull, one relic, and nine inserts. But when we look at the autos, you've got Trout, Shohei, Brandon Marsh, rookie autos, all very nice autos, a very good auto subset. You've even got Jose Moda in there as one of the ballpark profiles. So just a very good, solid team, especially with the autos that you can pull, although the odds are fairly long. Just going to state that up front. If you're looking for the most autos, you want to look at the Chicago White Sox, a very good break team for opening day. You've got 13 base cards, two rookie cards, nine different autos you can pull, three relics, and eight inserts. A few of the autos you'll be chasing, you've got Luis Robert, you've got Eloy Jimenez, Tim Anderson autos in there, so a very solid lineup for autos for the Chicago White Sox. If you want the most rookie cards, the Washington Nationals. You've got nine base cards, four different rookie cards, two relics, and five inserts. What you're really going to be looking for with the Washington Nationals, even though they have four rookie cards, you're really chasing Soto inserts and relics. The rookies are not big name rookies. They could pan out though, and it's always a nice strategy and breaks to go after rookie cards because you never know what's going to happen with some of those rookies. They could go on to do great things. If you want just a solid choice, look at the Boston Red Sox. They've got nine base cards, two rookie cards, five different autos you can pull, five different relics, and 15 different inserts. The guys that you're looking to pull out of there, uh, Jaron Duran, Xander Bogarts, Raphael Devers, uh, Bobby Dahlbeck autos. So another good auto lineup with the inserts that you can get out of this and the different relics. You're just probably not going to miss that much if you get the Boston Red Sox in a break. A couple sleepers. 
My first one going to be the New York Mets. There's eight base cards, two rookie cards, four different autos, eight relics, and 11 inserts. They've got more relics than any other team, and relics play a large part in opening day. So if you're chasing some of those relics, they've got eight different ones that you can choose from, and they've got a decent auto checklist. Pete Alonzo's in there. Keith Hernandez is in there. Uh, not too much beyond that. But overall, they've got a decent number of base cards, they've got plenty of relics, plenty of inserts, and they are probably be a top 10 team if you were in like a pick your team break. But again, with how inexpensive this is, if you were to get into a case break of this stuff, you're probably going to walk away in pretty decent shape with the New York Mets. My second sleeper is going to be the Philadelphia Phillies. They've got 10 base cards, 2 rookie cards, 6 different autos, 6 different relics, and 12 inserts. And the autos you can get are going to be pretty good. you got Bryce Harper, Zach Wheeler, uh, Reese Hoskins in there. And most of those autos are going to be in the form of those Luck of the Irish inserts. The Phillies are kind of an under-the-radar team all throughout 2022 so far in Series 1 and in Opening Day. They're a solid team to get. If you get them in a random team break, it's a great team. You might even be able to trade for them and trade kind of a middle-tier team for those, say, like the Yankees. I would take the Phillies over the Yankees all day in Opening Day. Just some nice numbers here when we talk about high number of base cards, decent amount of rookies, tons of different inserts, a good number of autos, and some of those autos and that luck of the Irish insert, gonna be pretty fun ones to pull. So, those are my teams that I would recommend in break team targets. However, I'm gonna tell you where I think all of these teams fall, and the ones I think you should be avoiding, ones I think you'll do okay on, and the ones that have kind of bubbled up to the top, all in one page. So let's start with the top tier. Like I said, the Angels, a very good team. I believe they're the best team that you can get in this. But don't forget, you've got Wander Franco rookie cards in this set. So Tampa Bay, going to be hot. They may end up being the most expensive team to get in a break. I believe that if you're choosing between the Angels and the, and the Rays, I would go the Angels way. Uh, the Red Sox, also good. We covered off on the White Sox. The Phillies, my sleeper team, I believe they're one of the top five teams you can get in this. The Braves have a ton of cards. And the Mets, another one of my sleeper teams. Any one of these teams, I think you're going to be doing just fine in a break. And I would recommend to get them in a pick your team without second thought. For our second tier teams, you'll kind of see most of our teams land in here. The Cincinnati Reds, if you're chasing some of those mascot cards, um, which are fun, especially if you've got kids or something like that, and you've got the Milwaukee Brewers, which was not a very good team in Series 1. They move up into the second tier here for opening day. Again, a lot of that kind of revolves around the mascot cards. And the other team that kind of bumped up from that bottom tier from Series 1, you've got the Chicago Cubs. The Chicago Cubs have a ton of different cards in here. Again, we've got some mascot cards. They've got some de decent autos and kind of our usual suspects beyond that. The Blue Jays, the Astros, always kind of a decent team in most sets. And of course, the Dodgers and Padres also in there as well. The teams I would steer clear of, the Guardians, the Rockies, the Marlins, which is a little bit of a surprise here. The Marlins were kind of a middle tier team in Series 1, but just not a lot happening here in opening day. The Pirates, again, I think they're going to be a better team towards the end of the year. But for right now, the Pirates just don't have much to offer in sets. Same kind of goes with the Diamondbacks. The Orioles also do not have many cards in this set either. I would definitely steer clear of the Orioles. The Nationals, even though they have those four rookie cards, I'm going to put them in the bottom because there's just not a lot there. And the Rangers kind of in that same boat with the Guardians, the Astros, and the Diamondbacks. Just not a lot of cards to chase. So these are the eight teams I would definitely stay away from. Probably not worth your time in a pick your team. If you hit them in a random team, do what you can do to try and trade them. But at the end of the day, all this stuff is going to be really inexpensive if you're buying into breaks. And like I said before, you'll probably just buy a personal box of this more than you would buy a break. But there's the information for you. I hope you guys enjoy it. If you do, throw over to first, hit that like button for me. But now it is time to find out how good 2022 Tops Opening Day really is. What we do with the sensational set rating, we're going to break the set down into 10 different categories. And here they are. So my first category is appeal. 
In the past, I have kind of ranked this appeal a little bit lower. I gave it a five this year, and here's why. Investors are gonna stay away from this stuff. There's not a lot of value in most of these cards, the vast majority of them, in fact. However, I do think that with the rise in pricing in cards, that this set does have a lot of appeal towards two different audiences. One, budget collectors. You can get a lot of cards for really cheap, and they're all kind of in that flagship design just with that opening day logo. And then two, kids. There is a ton of cards that kids will enjoy in this set. I have had my kids open it. It's a fun set for them. And I believe it's a fun set for them to collect and a manageable set for them to collect. And that is a large segment of the hobbies population. So I went ahead and gave it a five. For the base checklist, it's basically the top series one checklist parsed down to 220 cards. So I went ahead and gave it a six. You've got all of the rookies that you would have found in 2022 top series one. So I give it a six. The auto checklist, I'm giving it a four. They do have some big names in there. You can get Trout, Shohei, Soto. But the reality is, is there's just not a lot to chase here. A lot of the autos are in that mascot world. Some of them are kind of second tier players and they're all going to be sticker autos. So for me, I go ahead and give it a four. For our inserts, parallels, and variations, there are a ton of inserts in here. Some of them are very fun inserts and subsets to collect. Parallels, we don't have a lot going on, so we take a few points off on that. But we do have the 25 image variation cards in the base set checklist, which I like there. So I went ahead and gave it a five. The inserts kind of driving that number. For our production run and pack odds, Again, this is available all over the place. The production run will not be quite as high as Series 1, but still going to be sky high. This is another one of those sets that Fanatics is definitely going to say, we can produce a lot of this stuff, sell it to people for cheap to meet demand. So I go ahead and give it a 3. For the card quality, I'm going to give it a 4. It's a standard cardboard card. However, on opening day in the past, because it's a value product, the quality control is not quite there. On some of the parallels, they're really kind of hard to get gemmed and perfect. So I go ahead and give it a four. For historical value, historically, I have given it a one or a 1.5. I'm actually going to bump it to two this year because one, we've got Wander Franco. And in the last couple years, they have thrown some cards in there. This year, they're throwing in that relic book. There's going to be some cards that will sell okay and command some value on the secondary market. But the reality is the vast majority of these cards, you're not collecting this for investing. You're collecting it because you're a collector. So the value becomes a little bit less important. And these do not hold the same value that the flagships, the chromes, and all of that are going to hold. So I go ahead and give it a two. For the cost value, I'm going to give it a six. This is a very inexpensive product to buy into, which is great, but cost value, when we talk about, you know, how much return are we getting on the box that we're buying, you're probably not going to get your return a lot. So I'm going to give it a six. I like that it's a cheap set that you can buy into, cheap set to kind of complete, and it's a fun set. For our artistic value, I give it a 7.5. Tons of fun inserts. It's the lighter side of baseball. The the relics, we've got those dual relics all over the place, the Major League Mementos, which takes pieces of ballparks, a very fun, creative set. So I go ahead and give it a 7.5. It's one of the stronger aspects of this set overall. And for collectability, I'm going to go ahead and give it a 5. From an investment standpoint, it is not something I would recommend to invest in. However, if you're a set collector on a budget, a great set to try and collect. You can collect it totally on a budget. And on top of that, if you're young, if you're a kid getting into the hobby, or even if you're new to the hobby and don't really want to invest the money that it's taking these days to kind of amass, you know, a certain amount of cards that you're looking to get, this set really is a nice set to buy into. Now, you're not going to get a lot of investment. You're not going to get a lot of high dollar cards out of here, but you will get a very good representation of baseball in 2022 in this set. And some of the inserts, the mascots, just very fun cards to buy into. So I go ahead and give it a five. So now it's time to find out how good Topps 2022 
opening day really is. For 2022, we have a score of 47.5. So it comes in as a poorly rated set, but a lot of that, keep in mind, is based upon the value of this set overall, which is what drives so much of the hobby today. If you're an investor, this is definitely a poor set, but don't let that score scare you away. If you are a young collector on a budget, if you are new to the hobby, there is stuff that is very fun in this set. It might not hold a ton of value, but it definitely has a space in the hobby. You can collect this set for very cheap. You can get a lot of fun insert cards. If you're a kid, it's going to tell you all the things you need to know about baseball. And it's really kind of geared towards you with the mascots, with the dugout peaks, and shows you the culture of baseball, which is really, really cool. In 2021, Topps opening day came in at a 48.5. So we can see the set kind of settling right where it was last year, just off by a point. But what's interesting is in 2020, this set only came in at a 41.5. In the last couple of years, they have put some cards in here that have kind of increased the value, increased the collectability, and they've made it a very affordable set for any collector to get into. So even though it's not ranking really high on the sensational set rating scale, it does have a place in the hobby for a certain segment of the hobby. If you are someone that likes grading cards and doing that, probably want to stay away from this set. If you are someone that just likes to collect cards, wants some of the cards from your team, this is a fun set to get into for not a lot of money. So Comment below. Let me know what you think about this score. Let me know if you're getting into Tops Opening Day. I try and respond to most of the comments that are worth responding to in the comments. And be sure to throw over to first, hit that like button for me, and subscribe to the channel. It is the best way you can support it. We're going to do these reviews throughout all of 2022 for most of the major releases so we can kind of keep good track on what we're buying into and what teams we should be targeting in breaks, and how good these sets really are. So with that, guys, thank you for watching this 2022 Tops Opening Day Set Guide and Review. As you're out there in the wild, I hope that you have good luck finding this on the shelves, and I hope you have good luck on your pack pulls. And until the next review, please take care of your family, take care of your friends, take care of your neighbors, and most importantly, take care of yourself. Have a good day.